Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to another golf club video. In today's video, we are going to be doing an actual tips video. Real tips from me to you to hopefully get your game on a better path in the golf club. Now, a couple of reasons why I'm doing this. First off, a couple of you asked for it. Since you've asked for it, I'm definitely going to give it to you. The second reason is some of you didn't quite take kindly to me memeing about Golf club tips? Wow. Possibly the most useless video on YouTube. In fact, it's so dumb it should be removed. Not once did you actually give any useful tips. Really? Hit it straight? Putt better? Get closer? Wow. I was trying to skull the ball every time, hoping it would get closer to the hole. This video sucks. So I wanted to just get everything back on track. Last video, absolute joke. I thought it was hilarious. A lot of people thought it was hilarious, but I think some people actually came looking for golf club tips and I gave them <laughs> not golf club tips. So today we're going to be doing actual golf club tips. Are they the perfect tips? Probably not. I'm sure there are things that I do that other people don't. Hopefully I can help at least somebody with their golf club game. And that's what the goal is. So let's get started and we'll start with I would say is the most important tip about getting better at the golf club. So our first tip is buy the game. All right, I had to get that out of my system, but let's jump in to actual golf club tips. Here we go. So we'll go over what I think are the main emphasis of where people struggle with when it comes to the golf club. And then at the end, I'll give you just some random tidbits that just I thought of as I was playing through a round. And I'll also make sure just to kind of go through like a couple of holes and a couple of examples with y'all just to kind of show the way that I go through each of these individual aspects of the golf club. So the first one and probably the most important one is just overall ball striking. So when it comes to ball striking, the main thing is people will noodle it which means, you know, when you get your feedback at the end, your line, because you have to stay in the middle, will just be all over the place and you'll push it, you'll pull it, you know, you'll, you'll just go all over the place. Now, when I've seen people do this, just in other channels, if I'm watching them play, the big thing that they struggle with is making sure that they pull down the stick initially straight down. If you pull it down to the right, pull it down to the left, your thumb will try to overcorrect and usually you'll get this weird noodle or you'll overcorrect to one side or it'll just go all over the place. So I would say the first tip for good ball striking is to make sure you pull the stick down straight. It has to be down straight. So when you pull it down straight, your thumb will just automatically go back to its original position and flick it up straight. And so if you struggle with this, if it's something that you've noticed that you're always pulling it down to the left, always pulling it down to the right, or you're just all over the place, what I would suggest is to actually look down at your controller. I did this for the longest of time before it just became like uh, second nature. So look down at your controller. Make sure you're pulling the stick down dead straight. And when you pull it down straight, look back up to make sure your tempo's on par and flick it back up. Now this may seem quite awkward at first, and your tempo may, may suffer as you get used to it, but making sure that you pull that stick down straight is very, very important to when it comes to striking the ball straight. So look down at your controller, pull it down, make sure you're pulling it down straight. If you are, look up at your screen and conclude the follow through on your up once your club gets to the right spot for tempo. And if you're looking down and if you're not pulling it down straight, just reset. Just let go, reset, look down again, make sure you're pulling it down straight look it up. I did this for hundreds of hours. Once it gets everything to second nature though, you don't need to do it anymore, but this just trains your thumb. This, this is where I need to pull the stick every time, every time, every time. And of course, with a lot of these things that I'm about to go over with you guys, I need you all to know that practice is everything. So I have almost 400 hours and I don't create golf courses. So this is all just me on the course playing. I have almost 400 hours just on the golf club 2019. I have another close to 600 hours between the first golf club and golf club two. 
So I have almost a thousand hours combined into the golf club. So it's a lot of practice, 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 practice. And that's something that you're going to have to do as well. But these tips that I'm giving are just kind of a starting point for you. You know, if you're struggling with certain things, hopefully these will help you just get everything on track so that you can continue your journey of getting better at the golf club. Now, another thing with ball striking, if you're noticing that you're constantly pulling your stick down in one direction, it's always, you know, off to the right or off to the left when you initially pull it down. Try just turning your controller. Turn it, set up the same, and then pull it down. Turning your controller, like if you're always pulling it off to the right, off to the right, off to the right, just turning your controller so that your thumb just pulls it down in the correct direction will help immensely. Usually if you see me struggling, like uh, during my videos, if you see me struggling with pulling it down in a certain direction constantly, I'll just make micro adjustments turning the controller in my hands. That way I pull the club down straight. So when it comes to ball striking and hitting it straight, I think those are the two biggest things that you can do to help improve your game. Next up, we have elevation changes. So if you didn't know every three feet equals a yard difference. So if you're uphill 30 feet, if you're hitting up to a, an elevated green that's uphill 30 feet, it'll actually take 10 yards off. So if it's, you know, 220 for the club, you'll actually hit it 210 and then you'll roll out. Downhill, same thing, just vice versa. If it's 30 feet downhill, it's going to add 10 yards to your swing. In most cases, I just want to make that very clear. Some of the wedges doesn't really adjust it at all. It'll adjust a little bit, but not that much, just because of the trajectory of the ball going a lot higher in its arc. Another thing that elevation will do is it'll adjust the way your ball reacts when hitting the green, especially when using a longer ranged club. So if you have, let's say, you know, a four iron coming into a green that's elevated, since it's not going to be on its, on its biggest downturn in the trajectory of the ball, the ball is going to hit short and it's going to roll a lot more. So it's just something to keep in mind. You know, when you're, when you're hitting the ball, just think of the actual trajectory of the ball. It's not on its steepest route down to the green because of the elevated green. So it's going to hit and it's going to run a lot. Just keep that in mind when you're choosing, you know, which club to use to hit into an elevated green, you know, based on the elevation change and the amount of yards it's going to take off. Just keep that in mind when you're coming into the green. And as far as elevation goes, I mean, that's, that's pretty much, that's pretty much it. That's all you need to really know about elevation. The biggest thing is the yardage difference. Uh, if you just know when to hit it long, when to hit it short, and know what clubs run for you and what don't, especially on the green, then you'll be fine when it comes to elevation. The next big thing, and really probably the hardest thing for me to describe, is dealing with the wind. It's kind of hard to give tips for the wind, just because dealing with the wind just comes with practice. Knowing how e each club is going to react to the wind, how it's going to differ, you know, how much like a medium wind or a high wind or a low wind is going to affect your ball in the air. That all comes with practice. I think the best thing that you can do is to play like a front nine, let's say. You don't have to do a full a full nine, but just do a front nine, do no wind, hit the ball. You know it's not going to do anything. Just hit the ball. Then bag out, do a low wind, same direction, hit the ball in the same exact spot, see how much of a change it makes. Just note that for all of your clubs. Do medium wind, do high wind, do very high wind. Just do that with all of your clubs. Just see the difference that it makes. Make notes of it. Take notes if you need to. Take notes. I mean, I used to do that as well. I would take notes. Like, okay, if I get medium wind with my 8-iron, there's going to be, you know, a 8-yard difference from where I'm aiming. So it's just something just to, it comes with practice. You just, you hit the ball. The more you hit it with that club, the more you learn about what the wind's going to do to each of one of your clubs. Now, I will say there are a couple things. If the wind is in your face, the ball will stick more. Of course, if you're going into a downhill slope, it's not stick still going to run, but the ball will stick more. Even with lower irons, you know, your your fours, your threes, your two irons, the ball does still stick more if the wind is in your face. So when you're going into the wind, you can usually be more aggressive to the hole, depending on the green and the slope, but you can still be more aggressive into the hole. With, when the wind is at your back, 
Of course, the complete opposite. The ball will hit and it will roll a lot more. So with certain clubs, make sure you aim shorter, have it hit and have it roll up to the hole. Don't get aggressive because if you get aggressive, you're going to go over the hole. So that's just something to keep in mind with the wind. Other than that, it's just practice. You just got to go in and hit a ton of balls just to know what the wind does to each of your clubs. So we've done ball striking. We've done elevation. We've done wind. Probably the biggest thing and the one thing that I think people ask me the most about are the greens. What do you do around the greens? How do you choose where to putt? Those are probably the most asked question through YouTube and through my Twitch stream. So when it comes to putting, I'm sure there is an absolute right way to do this, taking in the angle of the green along with the force exerted on the ball with the right angle of the quadrilateral exertion of motion or something or other. But I'm just going to tell you what made me better at putting and something that you can use as a starting point and just kind of build upon it the more practice you get in the game. So the first step is what are the green speeds? In most cases, the faster the greens, the more break you're going to get on your putts. With slower greens, you're able to attack holes more, which means that they won't break as much because you can hit that thing quite hard, quite firm to try to beat through some of that break. So first step, what green speeds are you using or what green speeds are the tournament set at? Just remember, rule of thumb, faster they are, the more they break. Step two, is it an uphill or is it a downhill putt? Uphill putts on most greens are not going to break as much. The reason behind this is because on an uphill putt, you are hitting that ball a lot firmer, which means the initial break that you have, you know, the first nine feet, let's say, or three yards of your putt, you're going to be beating through a lot of that break because you're hitting the ball very firm up the hill. Now, as it goes up the hill and starts to lose speed, the slope then comes into account and the ball starts to break more. So on uphill putts, you're not going to na- aim as much left or right because you're going to beat through the first three, four yards of the break on the putt, which means, of course, on downhill putts, unless you get very aggressive, downhill putts are the exact opposite. These putts will usually break more as the initial strength, the firmness of the putt at your feet is much less meaning that the initial break will come on stronger. So instead of it taking, you know, nine feet for the break to start, it'll be almost immediate that the break begins. So the next two steps, I'm sure a lot of people do completely different. I'm sure it's a wide spectrum of where people use as a starting point to select where they're going to putt. But for me, the third step in your putting process is what is the distance? So on shorter putts, I usually get quite aggressive. I won't take too much break into account, and I will firmly, firmly strike the ball to just aim center cup for it to drop. I do this in game, and I do this in real life. You know, anything under, unless the slope is ridiculous, which sometimes you have to account for, but usually anything under eight, nine feet, I hit that ball pretty damn firm to make sure that I just get it to center cup for it to drop. Now, the distance that you set on the marker is considered a sweet spot. Now, unless they change something, I had a dev in my stream when this game first came out, and when you set the distance on a marker for your putt and you hit it at whatever strength you have set on that marker, it's considered a sweet spot, which means that the ball will come out even more accurate, according to the dev. So, when it comes to distance that you're setting, Two things play into it. First, uphill or downhill. For uphill putts, every inch of elevation change, I usually add a foot. So if you have a 10-foot putt and it's an inch uphill, I'll usually swing for 11. But let's say you have a longer putt, you know, a 30-footer. 30 feet and it's, you know, 10 inches uphill. I'll usually place the marker, bend on slope, and aim for 40 feet instead. I hit it strong enough to get up the hill and to get into the hole. Downhill putts, same thing, just switched around. If you have a 20-foot putt, and it's three inches downhill in elevation, I'll usually aim for 17 feet, is where I want my distance on the club when I pull it back. With distance control, again, it's, it, is, it is nothing but practice. Just knowing the feel of the club, knowing what the full club is, make sure you look at you know, if it's a very fast green or a fast green, you know, looking at the, the full, if you were to hit that putt 
at full, how many feet would it go? That gives you in the top right corner when you have the putter selected. So, you know, if it's 166 and you need an 80 foot, you know that you need to pull it back exactly halfway in your swing. So use a practice swing. I do this all the time. I use a practice swing. I'll pull the club all the way back and be like, okay, that's what I, that's what it is for full. I'll find the halfway point and I'll just, I'll do a couple practice swings at halfway point, And then finally I'll just hit it at the halfway point. So use practice swing. It's there just for that. So use it when you have to, but mainly the thing for distance is what's the elevation change? Is it uphill, downhill? How long of a putt is it? And I'll make adjustments with those factors in mind. So you know the speed of the greens. You know if it's uphill or downhill. You know what distance you want to hit it. So the next step is what is the slope? Now the slope is going to change or could change all of these things that I just said, depending on what kind of slope you're on. You know, if you're in the middle of yellow, a yellow slope, you're going to have to hit that thing up the hill and it's going to have to come back down. So the speed is going to be all over the place. And most of the time with those kind of putts, if you don't hit the hole, you're going to go past it. You just have to be prepared for that. Just don't be scared to hit it because the one thing that you don't want to happen is for you to hit it up the hill and you weak it. You know, you don't hit it hard enough and it doesn't go that far and then it stops on the same hill. And then you have the same exact putt, just a shorter distance ahead. Don't be scared to attack the hole on those kind of putts. Let's just get that right out of the way. But with the slope, what I do, as a rule of thumb, I will start at the hole, and I'll work all the way back to where I'm at putting the ball. And I'll look at the slope of each square, which is a yard, three feet. So for me personally, I use a three, six, nine rule. What I mean by that is for uphill putts, for every three feet of break, I will adjust to the left or to the right, depending on the slope, three inches. For even putts, so not really much slope down or slope up, it's quite even, I usually adjust about six inches to the left or to the right. And for downhill putts, I will adjust to the left or the right every three feet of break, nine inches. Now, the reason for this is on on uphill putts, again, you're beating through a lot of the initial break. So moving it to the left to the right three inches makes up for that break at your feet that you're beating through mostly, and then the ball will start to break once the slope slows the ball down. On even putts, I mean, it will vary. Sometimes they're slightly uphill. Sometimes they're slightly downhill. You just have, it's around six inches is where I adjust. And then you can make little micro adjustments too. The more that you play that slope, play those types of greens. Downhill slope, again, that break grabs onto that ball a lot sooner because you're not hitting it as firm. You're not hitting it through all of that initial break at your feet. So you have to adjust accordingly. So for that, I do about nine inches. So that's just my rule of thumb. Every putt is different though. And some things can change how that putt's going to work out. So when it comes to putting, those are pretty much the big things for me. What's the green speed? Uphill or downhill? Adjust accordingly. What's the distance? What are you setting your marker at? What is the slope? Adjust accordingly. Those are the four main points for putting. You start there and you build upon it to become a better putter. Now let's put everything that I just went over to the test. So for here, we have a 28 footer. What we're going to do is we're going to start at the hole and see how much break we have counting essentially the squares. So if we go to the middle, which we want three feet, so we got three feet of break, six feet of break, nine feet of break, all to the right, 12 feet of break, 15 feet of break, 18 feet of break, 21 feet of break, 24 feet of break, and about a half. So we got about 25 and a half. So if we just count those squares up, this is what we get. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight and a half. Now this is uphill, way uphill. So using the rule, three inches for uphill putts, we got it eight times. So we got to go 24 inches, two feet. Now we know that these blocks are three feet. So we know from here to here is a foot and a half. 
18 inches. So from there, we just have to do another half a foot. Mount here. Now, it was eight and a half, so we have to add a, just a tiny bit because we did have that extra half here, right here, from here to here. We had this, this two feet here that we have to account for as well. So go our 18 inches, we need 24. So we go an extra six and then add just a little tap there for that extra bit right at our feet. Now we are a foot up all fast greens. We're at 28 now. For every inch we add a foot. So we're gonna go up to 40 feet. So we're gonna be hitting a 40 foot putt. That's what we're gonna be aiming at, 40 feet. Now, if you wanna hit it harder, you can hit it harder, but if you hit it harder, you just gotta back off it a little bit. But if you wanna get perfect, 40 feet, that's the line we're shooting for. So now we just gotta aim for a 40 foot putt. Since this is a fast green and we have 163 feet, we're gonna be aiming for about a quarter swing. So if you pull it all the way back, that's your full swing. That's your half swing. That's about your quarter swing right there. So that's what we're going to be shooting for here. So line up the ball. Let's give it a whirl. Just like that. Here's another example, but this one's a little bit different because this, again, is a very short punt. So, if we were to do it the normal way, if we do the the same 369 rule, uh it is quite even, and by quite I mean it is almost exactly even. It's a little uphill right at our feet. So if we were to use the normal rule of 369, we'd have 1 2 about 3. So 9 feet of break. Since it's even, we'd do 6 inches, so we would aim for 18 inches if this was normally what I want to, would want to do and we would hit it now you can do this but for me this is a very very short short putt so what I'm going to do is I am going to hit it like it's an uphill putt beat through some of this break and we're going to do like it's an uphill putt so I'm going to aim as if it's an uphill putt I'm going to adjust my left to right in this case it's adjusting to the left as if it's an uphill punt and i'm going to hit this very firm to beat through a lot of this break and just aim for center cup the reason i do this is because you have a little bit more wiggle room hitting a 10 foot putt exactly 10 feet that doing this it's very difficult a lot of the time you're going to short it it's just it's just not gonna it's not gonna work out for you you're gonna short it you're gonna hit it long and you're either going to come front side cup or you're going to go, you know, long and it's going to go left. So I just, I just, with these shorter putts, I just act as if I'm hitting it. It leaves you a little bit more room to miss with your distancing. So this is where we're going to aim it. I'm going to hit this firm. We're going to beat through a lot of this initial break and we're going to go for the center cup. Just like that. Again, you can go for a shorter putt. Do the 10 foot, aim it six inches to the left. I mean, you can do all of that, but you just have, you don't have a lot of room to miss with your distancing. So hit it a little firm, be through some of that break and act like you're going uphill. That's what I do personally. You can do however you would like though. So here, same thing, 13 feet. It is slightly downhill. We're gonna play this as if it's even. So let's count it out. One. Two, three, almost, almost four. It's a, it, it's not moving too quick right here though, and you can even take a look at it. It picks up, it picks up a little bit. We'll call it, we'll call it four. If we're playing it as if it is even, we have four, twelve feet of break, four boxes. We're playing it as if it's even, so we're gonna do six inches for every three feet. So we have to move this 24 inches. Again, we know this is 18, so we'll go 18, an extra six. 
where you're going to shoot for 13 here. Now, like I did in the last one, we can tone this back and aim it higher, but I just want to show you how this works as well. So we're going to do right here. We're going to aim for 13 feet, and we're going to watch this break into the hole here. Oof. So we hit it a little, a little short there, but that's what I was referring to with you don't have a lot of room to miss. So we're going to hit this as if it's uphill now. So we got the same thing. We got one, two, three, about four. We're going to aim as if it's uphill. So we're going to do the three inch rule. So we got to move this 12 inches to the left, which is about right there. We're going to aim it a little long as if we're hitting it uphill. Now let's crank back and hit it towards the hole. Just like so. So there's two ways that you can you can play that. You can play it a little shorter, as if you're gonna hit it, you know, right at that even mark, hit it exactly 13 feet on your distancing when you're pulling back your putter and play the break. Or you can cut back some of your sloping and just hit the ball firmer. It's completely up to you on, on which way you want to do it. You can do either or. Me personally, I like to go the more firm route on putts like that just because you have more room to miss like you can hit it 21 22 feet and it'd probably still go in you can hit it 20 19 or 18 feet on your distancing and it it might drift front side but you have more room to miss if you play the slopes playing the slopes you really have to get it almost right on the dot or else it could lose momentum and slope out and will do exactly what happened on the first putt. So it's just up to you on, on, on what you want to do, what you feel more comfortable with. So here we have a pretty heavy bender. So let's look at it. The slope is quite substantial. We have one, two, we have three, we have about four. So we have about, I mean, I mean again, it's 13 feet of break that we have here. For this, because the slope is so substantial and we have a down slope past the hole with more slope, we do not want to risk hitting this too hard. And for some miracle, it's sloping out and running all the way down this. So for this one, we are going to do the standard six inch rule here. So we have one, two, three, four. We're going to move it over two feet. This is a foot and a half. Add another foot to it. About there. And we are going to aim right for about 13 feet. Now for this putt. Now you may have noticed we hit it about 13 feet, but it sloped out, and we ended up shorting it. That's because for putts like this, this is bending heavily. So it just comes with practice and just knowing greens and what works. So what I do for these is we're going to do this the right amount. We're going to move it the extra foot. But then I'm going to actually move this over a little bit more. I usually will give it about another six inches. Now you can notice that we're, what we're doing here, you see how this actually becomes an uphill putt, us putting up this hill because the break is so substantial. So what we have to do is you actually have to hit it a little bit harder. Now, with putts like this, it is difficult. You probably are going to miss a lot of these putts. I still miss a lot of these putts. But this thing is heavily breaking. We have to go up this slope. So it's a little bit of an uphill putt. And we have to break this back into the hole. With putts like this, it's really just like you have to hit the hole. If you don't, you're probably going to have 
you know, three, four, five feet left on your next putt. But we moved it over a little bit more. We're hitting up the hill now, so we're going to add a little bit more strength to our distancing for our punt. Now let's hit the putt and see what we get. Just like so. It's really, so it's, it's, I said, what I said at the beginning, don't mind the score either, that's just me setting up putts. But um, like I said, during my greens, the, just the overall tips, what I give you is a rule of thumb. It's a rule of thumb for what you consider a standard break. It will vary. Like if, if you're looking at the beads and, you know, they're not quite moving that fast, you can adjust for it. Do your, your, your standard, you know, let's say it's a, just a, a flat punt and it was had 12 feet of break. So you're going to move it four times six, 24. You move it the two feet. But some of those slopes, they're not, they're just not quite moving as fast. Just dial it back some. Do, you know, 18 or do 12. Or if they're moving a lot heavier, then increase it like we would that last putt. Watch your elevation because usually when you're on a heavy slope, you have to hit the ball harder to get it up the slope or else you're going to, it's going to break too much and you're going to go front side hole. It's just a matter of using what I say as a starting point and then building upon that starting point with practice, just by looking at greens, looking at slopes. So what I give is a rule of thumb, and you can adjust accordingly from there. So here we have a downhill putt, and it's quite heavily downhill as well. So let's do the same thing that we always do. We start at the hole. Let's count it back. We have one, two. The third one tapers off a little bit. So does the fourth. So like I said in the last putt, you can adjust for this. So we're going to go one, we're going to go two. We're going to go, again, rule of thumb for downhill putts, nine inches. So we are going to go a foot and a half. A foot and a half to the right, just for this little stretch right here. That's how much break we're going to get. For this next stretch, it's not really moving too much. So I'll adjust for it. Me, personally, what I would adjust for is I would probably half it and do another eight nine inches for this little bit here so that's what we'll do we'll do the foot and a half for these two blocks right here and then we'll do another about eight inches go so right about there now it's downhill 17 feet is the distance six inches downhill for every inch of elevation change we dial it back a foot so that's what we're going to do we're going to dial it back a foot again hitting 11 feet a little bit difficult on your distancing we're going to hit it, watch it fly, see what happens. Just like so. It's Use it as a baseline. Like I said, baseline it, make adjustments as you go. So here we have a fairly long putt. It is heavily uphill. So let's take a look at a putt like this. So if we zoom in and look at it. We'll count it out just like always. One, two, three, four, and uh-oh, what happens here? Oh, it starts to break out to the right. So how do I handle right to left or left to right putts? So this is the way, this is the way that these putts work. You're going to hit it. We're going to hit through again the first six feet, seven feet of break because we're hitting it very firm. This ball is going to hit here, and it's going to start out right, quite heavily too, as it's losing the speed. Now, what happens on right to left or left to right putts, it'll break right, and then once it starts coming back left, that ball has to straighten out first. Then it starts breaking back to the left. So when it hits this first bit of break here, this first bit of break is going to be it, the ball straightening back out. Once it gets through straightening back out, because it's moving to the right here, once it hits straightening back out, then it's going to break back to the left. So what I do is I count it out. One, two, three, four almost. But this little bit is going to be it straightening back out. So I move it. I usually do three feet. So three feet of break. 
is just it straightening out. So I get rid of it. Act as if it isn't there. So I do one, two, act like this isn't there. I have to aim now. Since this is breaking back to the right, it eliminates another one of these blocks. So we're back to one. We're back to zero. We got one. This bit right here. So we got one to the right, two to the right, three to the right, four to the right. We're going to act as if this isn't here. Three to the right, two to the right. And we're going to go about uphill as if we're punting one, three feet of break to the right. So we have to aim this because it's going to be breaking more right than it will be left. So we have to aim this one and a half to the left. It's uphill. Three inch rule comes into play. So we're going to aim this about four and a half, five inches to the left. Get our distancing. 35 feet, so one foot uphill. So you can aim exactly for 47 feet if you'd like. You have to get it perfect though. I usually add a little bit because we have a little bit of room for error. So we're going to be aiming for about 50 feet. And this is the punt we have. Now, with longer putts like this, just getting it close is what you want to shoot for. You want to shoot for getting this thing within five feet. Five feet's really good. On longer putts, like, you know, your 70 or 80 or 90 foot putts, I usually just shoot for getting it within eight feet. That's your area of miss that you want to shoot for. Because at least getting it close, you have a chance to save a pawn. Called lag putts. So for this one, I just want to get it within five feet. More than likely, we'll get it even closer. But just if we can get this within five feet, we can save par here. <laughs> I literally, I literally, I just, I just took a swing and I don't know why, but I, I hit it as if it was like a 20 footer. That was so bad. <laughs> All right, so let me line this up again. It was really bad. All right, so we're going to aim for that right there. Going to aim for about 50 feet. Okay, let me, let me hit this again now. Oh, close. A little too hard. A little too hard. But we kept it within our five foot range, is what I was shooting for. And we have an easy cleanup. If I didn't miss hit the first one that I hit, that would have been to safe. That would have been to safe bar. But that's pretty much the basis between left and right putts. It's something I didn't really go into in the overall arching tips that I gave, but. For left to right, right to left putts, that's kind of usually how I set a base for it. Of course, it depends on the slope and everything, um, but that was the overall gist of it. So one more thing. I mean, I'm sure it's pretty, I'm guessing it's self-explanatory, but let's say you have a punt like this. You know, we're, we're within five feet of the hole. And I said it in the overall arching tips as well for greens. But for this, like if we were to count, let's say, you know, it'd be our one block or we have four feet of break to the right. It's an even putt. You could aim it six inches, of course, and just hit for five feet. I highly suggest you don't do that, though. Every putt that you have that's super short like this, it breaks to the right. Okay, what I'll do is I'll aim just outside cup. And I'll hit this very firm so that it, it breaks to the slightest. I mean, it will break to the slightest. We'll just go inside comp. I'm going to hit this very firm right at the hole. You do not want to take into account break on these short punts. Don't try to. Unless it is a heavy break and you're dealing with a very nasty slope. Putts like this, you just mash that ball into the hole. Just aim for center cup. Just do like just inside cup or just just outside center of the cup, really. And you just hit that thing firm, very firm, beat through almost all of the break that it has at the initial bit and just go for the hole. Now, don't hit it too hard. If you hit it too hard, of course, you're going to skip over the hole. But yeah, double it up. Like if it's a five footer, aim for 10 feet and just hit that thing home. Just put it right center cup and hit it home. And that's pretty much it putting I mean, that pretty much sums up putting i guess i probably could have named this entire 
<laughs> tips and tricks just putting because a lot of it's just putting. But I think putting saves you a lot of strokes on the course. So if you can get good at putting, everything else just kind of falls into line with practice. But I've given you a, a base to start at. I use a 369 rule. I'm sure there's a probably a better way of doing it. I'm sure there's some like very specific way to do it so that you make almost all of your freaking putts. But I use a baseline of 369, and then you adjust according to what you're trying to do with your putt, the distance of your putt. Um, but those were just a few examples for you on how the 369 method works. So ball striking, elevation, wind, greens. Those four things right there, I think, are the most important when it comes to being a better golf club player. And it's a good starting point to have. Now, I do have just some random tips. Just things that don't quite fit under anything. I mean, they could, but I kind of wanted to keep them separate just because I wanted to keep the four main points a little clean. Random tips that I have that I've learned just from playing hours of this game and from playing in real life. The first tip, hitting out the rough will not only decrease the distance, but it'll also flatten the ball out. You don't get under it quite as well, especially with like, uh, you know, five iron, four iron, three iron. You don't get under it quite as well. It comes out a lot flatter out of the rough. So you have to adjust for not only the decrease in distance because of your lie, but also if you're hitting you know, uphill, your ball is going to flatten out and you might not even make it up the hill. So you have to adjust your club accordingly to take into account for that. The second random tip and something that I learned just this year from a comment, if you very slow the backswing of a flop shot, it actually halves the distance. So with like a lob wench, 24 yards is the distance that it gets. If you hold your club at the top, just hold it there for, for a couple of seconds, and then complete your swing, you'll get a very slow backswing, which will actually half it. So instead of 24, you'll get 12, and so forth and so on with all of those flop shots. It also works with chip shots too. When you get a very slow, you actually duff it, but it still goes about half the distance and also doesn't roll out as much. So it's somewhere that you can, you know, if you're in a really tight spot and you need your chip shot to only go like three, four yards, that's something to keep in mind. The third tip is the driving range is your friend. It is your best friend. Before you go out on the course, you should go onto the driving range and hit a few balls. Because going into tournaments or going into rounds cold, you usually it usually takes you a second just to kind of get going. So go onto the driving range, hit some drivers. I the, what I what I usually do is I hit driver shots, I hit five iron shots, I hit seven iron shots, I hit pitching wedge shots, and I hit lob wedge shots. And I'll do a couple a couple flops, a couple chips, a couple pitches, and I'll go out onto the course. It's just a warm up because with tempo, tempo is a little different for every club. It's a little different for every club with pitches, flops, and chips. Again, it's a little different than like a full swing. So go on to the driving range, do practice shots. Usually it takes like five, 10 minutes. It's not that long. So just go do some practice shots with everything, and then go out on the course and play your round. If you're on the TGC tours, I highly suggest if you're if you're looking to improve your game, like if you've reached a point where you're like, okay, my skill level isn't at the cap, but I'm at a pretty good skill level where I should be doing better in these tournaments. Play practice rounds. Play the practice rounds. My bag is usually different for every single round that I shoot. I go out, I play a practice round with the conditions that they've set for the rounds. I go play a practice round and I adjust my bag accordingly. Two wood is too much for a lot of the holes with the wind they have set. Don't need a two wood anymore. Get a three wood. Get a four wood. Five wood. Whatever works best, but play a practice round. At least times that I don't play a practice round are usually my worst rounds. Play a practice round. Get your golf bag set with the clubs that you need to make you the best at that round and go play your round. And I know I've already stated this, but this is just another time I want to reiterate that practice makes almost perfect. I hate the saying that practice makes perfect because there's never perfect. Practice makes almost perfect. I want you all to remember, I have played the golf club for almost a thousand hours. Of course, it changes over the course of one, two, and 2019. The game has changed, but I've put a lot of time into the golf club. Before that, Tiger Woods constantly, Lynx Golf. Like I've been playing 
golf games for a long time. Am I the best? No, but I'm, I would say I'm pretty good at this game. So just remember, I put a lot of hours in. You should also, if you're wanting to be great at this game, practice. You just got to practice. And don't get discouraged. If you play bad, if you play a bad round, you know, you just got to try to go to the driving range, do your practice round, just try to level out the kinks in your swing, go back out, get it done. Practice, practice, practice. I could have put this in to the ball striking or into the greens, but it's something that you should always do on every swing. Check the lie at your feet, please. Every, almost every single swing, you should check the lie at your feet. In case you didn't know, I'm sure a lot of you watching do, but if the ball is above your feet, so if you pull out, if you hit, well, for me, it's left trigger on an Xbox controller, but I think it's probably L2, I would guess, on a PlayStation controller. When you hit it on your swing, if the beads are moving to the left and you're a right-handed swinger, that ball is going to come off to your left. Now, once you get into wedges, it doesn't come off as far left, but the higher you go in your club, six, five, four, three, two, two wood, you know, the more that ball is going to come off to the left. Vice versa, if the ball is under your feet, it's going to be coming off to the right. The same thing goes with downhill and uphill. So uphill, ball isn't going to travel as far because your trajectory at a higher arc point. So the ball isn't going to travel as far. It's going to go straighter up into the air, which means that the ball is going to be sticking more when it hits. Downhill, I've had a little differences in downhill. With downhill, usually the trajectory is lower. The ball runs more, but it's shorter. For some reason, I don't know. In this game, it just doesn't quite work that way all the time. But most instances, if you're hitting on a downhill slope, it's going to come out at a lower trajectory and the ball is going to run more. So just keep that in mind as well. Another big thing with checking the lie is when you get up to putt, don't always trust the initial boxes on the green because sometimes the ball will be breaking. It'll break to the right, like in between that box. So what you do is just switch over to a lob wedge or a driver, hit left trigger, or L2. I think it's L2 on PlayStation. If it's not, I'm sorry, but hit that button and check what the green grid reads for your first initial break. Because those micro differences between the actual green grid and your lie grid, those micro differences could be the difference between you getting par and you getting birdie. So if you're not sure about the green, especially at the initial point of your break, make sure you switch over to a lob wedge and check your initial lie on your putt. So always, in almost every single putt, you should check the lie at your feet. Another thing that I could probably go a little bit more in depth in, it's just I, I wasn't 100% sure on the math of it, is when you loft the club and de-loft the club. So on most clubs, lofting it and de-lofting it, I believe takes between anywhere from 10 yards off or adds about seven. For me, it's really just a feel for it. One thing that you can do, and I've seen a lot of people do, is you can go either into the driving range, but sometimes the random wind in the driving range, that could be different. Or you can go into an actual course and with no wind, just hit a shot, declare it unplayable, hit another shot. And you can do that with every club to see how much the loft, either increasing the loft or decreasing the loft, uh, how much that gives and takes from your shot. Now, I usually don't fully loft it unless it's like a short chip and I need to stop. I usually stay between like the halfway point up and the halfway point down, which is about five yards. So it takes away five yards, it adds five yards, depending on wind, of course, and elevation. But for the most part, if you're on a level playing ground, decrease five yards going up, increase five yards going down. But now going down, like decreasing the loft, flatter trajectory, going to make it run more, increasing the loft, higher trajectory, going to make it stick more. So when it comes to loft, really, if you want to know, just Go into the driving range or a practice round, shoot different shots and see what the loft does for your clubs. Exactly. If you want to know exactly, that's the best way I could say to do it. I know of some people who do distancing. I used to. I don't know. It just became too much. I just wanted to go out and shoot around. But you can go in and put, you know, two iron and then do normal two iron. That's how far it went. Fully lofted two iron. That's how far it went. 
fully de-lofted two iron, this is how far it went. And then just do everything in between. Um, I know of some people who do that. They write every club that they have down to get the exact distance that they need. That is one thing that you can do. There's always little things that you can do in this game to just have an advantage in it. But that's about all the tips that I have. I'm sure there are a lot more out there. And if you have any other tips, leave them in the comments below. Someone might come and watch this video, watch all of this. They have all this down. Your comment could give them something that they didn't know, which has happened to me. Like I said, I have almost a thousand hours and I've, I've learned like three new things during the course of me putting these YouTube videos up that I had no idea were even in the game. So put the comment down below. If you have any other tips that you think people should know, let them know. Of course, as well, if you did enjoy this video, make sure to leave a like on the video. Also think about subscribing. I do post my rounds every single week for the TGCT. I post them Wednesday through Saturday. I also provide a little extra different content if you're into just different types of games. And I like to joke and meme around. <laughs> a lot of people didn't like the last one. A lot of people did, but a lot of people didn't as well. I just like to joke around sometimes. So if you're into that, think about subscribing to the channel. I also stream live over at twitch.tv slash respawn TV. If you're interested in any other content that I do, you can usually find me over there starting at 8 o'clock Eastern time, Monday through Friday. Thanks for watching though. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really hope that some of these tips help you out. I hope you have a great rest of your morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever you are in the world. And I'll catch you guys on the next video. Deuces.